Like everybody wants hey, to good morning. Welcome to Warriors Peace University, where we don't just talk about having it all, we live it. This is a place where men come to master their bodies, their minds, their relationships, and their businesses. I'm your host, Raylan Heck. I'm joined by these men in person and online. We're going to get started this morning. Hmm, we're coming to the end of this three months. So really, uh, the one point I want you to start considering what have been your measurables? Measurables or your fruit? Yeah. Your measurables or your fruit? Let's go take it all the way to your fruit. What has been your fruit? Okay. Okay. So let's see, though. We started off at the very beginning three months ago. Started talking about what the code is, living by the code. Then we learned as well about our core four. Then we got into the stack. All of these things we had not a clue about. <laughs> then they really seemed impossible. And then bringing stuff into alignment, whatever that was in your life, all seemed impossible in some ways like what more 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 i'm already doing enough more okay so i guess the first question would be what would be the first part that you would share about this experience I mean, I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> there is a point coming where I'm going to share the, my fruit live. Um, but probably the biggest part for me is the push that I can handle more. My capacity is more than what I originally started with of what I can handle. And that was a struggle. That's been a struggle the whole time. Mm. Yeah. But, you know, when you realize it, you know, when I'm driving home, you know, like last night, you know, with 16,000 pounds of shingles in the rain from St. Augustine, questioning my life, <laughs> I'm like, thank you. Instead of just being stressed, my thank you. I can 100% do this. Yeah. What am I doing? What am I listening to? Am I listening to the radio in the car? No. No, I'm not. I'm listening to the audio stacks, going through it, making sure I understand that I did the letter right, making sure I understand that I did the mirror right. You know, <clears throat> listening to, you know, audio books. You know, if that's not expansion of capacity, Versus sitting home on the couch, you know, drinking a protein drink, <laughs> not cake, wishing it was cake. <laughs> but I mean, you know, tr truthfully, that's what it is, the capacity, you know, it, the growth and understanding that, hey, I, I can handle more when I was probably thinking I could. When I joined Warriors Peace in November, <clears throat> I could not shoulder press a five-pound dumbbell with my left arm. Yesterday, I benched 220, and I pressed a 70-pound dumbbell. Oh, that's awesome. That, and for two years before that, I'd been wallowing in the fact that I was disabled for the rest of my life. Um, in the past three months, I have studied three books out of the Bible. Not read, studied. And stacked three books out of the Bible. I've been on more dates with my wife in the past three months than I have been in the past three years. And I'm getting accolades at work. Like it's, I'm the new guy on block and everybody's in love with me. It's, it's crazy. Every single part of the core four is bearing fruit for me. Yeah. 
And how's the alcohol going? Three weeks, I think. I'm not counting. Okay. Was that possible? I know you've been in different. Oh no, I was drinking seven a.m. to seven p.m. seven days a week. Showing up here in the mornings. Yeah. Bloodshot eyes. Yeah. It's huge, Nathaniel. My wife and I were talking about it last night. She, I, I, I have not been drunk since I walked in this building in November. No one in my family has seen me intoxicated. <laughs> I can say the same thing. Well, I was like two weeks before, a, a week or two before we came in and did the. Not since I walked in here five years ago, but yeah, you know, before before this twelve week program, like it was probably probably two weeks before. Yeah, that it was you know I've had a drink here or there. We've talked about that, and it was like yeah. it, it it was like, but but still, it's, I don't, I don't know, like one just it's like James always says, one's too many and three's not enough. Yeah. So like it almost like some of it it's it's like well what's the use, you know? It's um, it's good. I think just even the divine appointment you know, of the day, even being able to begin this, there was stuff that was leading up in your life to that day being the day again, then, you know, starting this program the next day, you know, or being opened up to what the next step is. Like I've seen a lot of that, right. Through these past months. And some of it, it's kind of neat. Uh, we had a little issue yesterday, Garrett, when he when he left our house and went to go home. He calls me a little bit. He's like, can you and John come pick me up? I was like, what's going on? It's like, I just got pulled over. And apparently the cops saying that my license was suspended and, and I already got pulled over one ticket before. And, you know, so he actually physically took my license, you know, and I can't drive home. So and he was hot. He's like, I never got pulled over. So he went, we talked a little bit on the way home and he didn't know what it was. He thought, you know, I was like, do you get a red light ticket? You know, they'll just, and so he called me, I was already in bed an hour later or whatever. And he called me and he's still, he's like, dad, I think I figured part of it out. I, 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 I don't know, but he starts, you know, he's still ticked off. And I was like, Garrett, think about it this way. What are the, just the logical chances of the cop just pulled out and said, Hey, I'm going to run this tag to see what. So what's the chances that he pulled out behind you out of all the times that we drive by and all the cars? And then what's the chances that it just happened to be the guy told him it actually got expired yesterday or he got a ticket yesterday or something. He's like, no, I didn't get a ticket yesterday. And I was like, what are, what are the chances of that? And mm -hmm. he, before I could get it out, he's like, yeah, I think God was watching after me. Like just the ability for him to go, I think God was watching after me because, you know, he's job interviews and this and that or what, and you know, for federal law enforcement or military, like, if it would have been, if he wouldn't have found out, you know, he might have been in a job interview like, hey, your license is expired, but w whatever, your mind could go a different place. But just the fact that he was able to, in the heat of the moment, finally go, oh, I think me getting pulled over and getting a ticket, which was very inconvenient, was maybe God watching after me. Still watching. Yeah. It was neat. <laughs> it is neat. I just want to say that's beautiful for both of you. Dude. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, that's that's a huge hurdle in itself, with nothing else included. Yeah, huge hurdle. Wow. I absolutely agree. I was literally on the couch with my wife last night talking about how much good has come from this in my life, and she says you are. A, she told me last night you're a completely different man than you were three months ago. Or starting in November. Yeah. Nathaniel, I see it too. There's totally a different guy. And when I can see that purpose and that passion inside you as well, dude, like, we'll run through a wall. That's the way we should be living our life. That's what he made us for. Not numb, dumb, disconnected. Like, fully engaged been beautiful what's up sean 
You let Andy go last. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Dude, I just want to dance in my underwear. I don't feel dignified at all about this. I think this is unleashing a beast that I don't even have full containment on 100%. Um, I don't think I can over say what this is doing to my spirit, what this is doing to my mind, what this is doing to my heart, putting me in touch with myself. The conf, the confidence that I have in the situations, dude, I, the durability in my soul to endure pretty much anything. Not just endure it, but be a leader in it. And lead my family, connecting with my kids. I don't have a lot of feedback from a spouse. I don't need it. For the first time in my life, I don't have to have somebody. Uh, I don't need a pet parrot. Um, dude, I am just starting. I know that. Some of the big tangibles, I think, are the fact that I'm very, like, it's consistent. So, you know, I've been in the Bible almost every single day. I think my streak was 11 days. I thought it was a lot more, but... I think I skipped a day, obviously, and then caught back up. Mm -hmm. uh, but being consistent in it has proven itself in what I just, how I carry myself throughout the day. So my action items just felt weird for a while, but now they've become like a kind of like, oh, that's why I am the way I am because I'm doing, I'm committing myself in a way. So that's kind of been amazing to watch me. I can literally just go fuel it up a little bit more. And then I got more. And I'm more durable and then I'm more ready. And I'm, yeah, I mean, like work, work has been amazing. Work is, sales have been amazing. I mean, the potentiality, I mean, I'm really saying no to work that I would have screamed for a year ago. Mm. And I know it's 100% the king, which is even more exciting because it's, if I know what I left up to me, what I'm, capable of and I know as far as not being a team player with the kingdom but now wanting nothing but my heart to change to be a giver first in order to gain the kingdom has changed me it's changed my heart to admit that I was so selfish that I had no idea what that would eat was two years ago So in the 90 days, that's really where things have come into focus. I think a lot of focus and clarity and being able to speak the way that I can speak now about it, write about it, uh, is absolutely um, changing my life. And, and it's showing me that it's super important that we share our voice because you don't even know that you have one or you have what people are looking for. There's so many people that are following my stupid videos that are commenting now, like kind of on the norm, like, oh, that here he comes, old buddy from California 20-something years ago, you know? So encouraged. I would have never encouraged him. I think that stuff is, like, just blowing my mind. Yeah. So I'm a little bit tailored in here, but outside of trying to put it into words it's god really showing me who i am you know not all of it's awesome not all of it i want to share but all of it is worth sharing because my comfort is no longer my number one priority yeah yeah you get that voice man and you get that voice and you get that out there you are going to encourage a lot of people La. it's good it is beautiful to watch even the shift in i'm not in your business like your business pursuits but i know talking to you how it was before and what it felt like your leadership was and then now who i interact with and that type i've totally seen a different person 
And so I can just imagine what that looks like as you're connecting with those people out there, being able to communicate and connect with them and speak truth to them. And the, and the, and here's the facts versus this guy here was bound up in more of the emotions of it and wanting to make it happen rather than this place that I'm watching you walk in is like more surrendered and in that place. I was lying. I was a professional at covering everything up, even convincing myself that what doing wrong was right. Yeah. Yeah. Your business this way will, will absolutely flourish and you will build the kingdom and there will be much abundance. Yeah. 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 It's good. Andy, what you got, brother? I'm not ready. That's what I got. Um, if I go back these last three months, I think my biggest, and because it's been something that's weighed on me my whole life, my weight, the whole deal, right? Um, dialing in in these last three months the way we have, and have I had my shortcomings? 100%. But I am down almost 30 pounds since we started, at least from today, right? Um, I'm looking forward to getting back and getting that body scan to see where that number's at. I had to switch that goal from 20% and getting it down to an 18% body fat. So, again, that's the goal for the end of the year. Uh, in the Bible, every day, and trying to... trying to see what God has for me in the verse that I'm reading. I'm very, it's very easy for me to just take something in and just read it and just get through it. But really trying to pull something from it, something of my own words. I feel like in the domain of balance, that one was more of a struggle for me than I thought. Because I guess I want more and I want to connect more. And even with my family, like I want to have deeper conversations and might be a little bit weird, but just like, I want them to be as open and as transparent as, you know, we, we, I'd love for us to be. Um, but that's, that's a place and that's where I get to walk in and I can't quit on that. As far as business goes, Man, I feel like I've been thrown for, whew, I don't even know. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm in a place where it's just like, I am now stepping into a journey that's going to continue to equip me for everything that is to come. As a place of living in the moment and taking advantage of every opportunity that steps in, that comes, seeing the opportunity in every opportunity, and it's interesting because yesterday, yesterday, as I'm reading my color test, it's one of those things, living in the moment and trying to take the light of the, of the situation. Walking more in that. So I'm just, if this is what basic training did, dude, next step, let's go. Yeah. Because I see that basic training took me from the place of just being okay with kind of not doing a whole lot to like seeing that I really have the ability to kind of stack stuff on and put it into put it into play or put it into motion however I can. And it's also made me see, I guess I'm a little more creative than I thought because, man, Canva, I can do some work with that. <laughs> Cap cut, we got some fun with that. Yeah. And I think going back and just like seeing that, like all of this, it really is fun. I love it. What were you going to say, Nathaniel? It's undeniable that there's fruit. In my life, it's undeniable that there has been transformation within me, but I'm not satisfied. It's not enough yet. I don't. I don't feel like I've 
arrived or, or even close to it. Yeah. There's got yeah. to be more. I'm hungry for more. Hungry. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to just take that down. Like, um, the main thing for me this whole time is continually trying to focus on what is the depth of the spirituality versus the reality and too easy when you're talking about fruit right somebody could go oh yeah okay that's what you're hungry for and i think if i'm here in your heart right it's like a spiritual depth of hunger that's not satisfied that you need to still be in the part of building the depth of who that is inside it's just the fruit that comes from that is like oh this actually works right I don't want to get too mystic, but who's read um, Untethered Soul? Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to get to the point here of building your own character. Okay. That's what I'm trying to get to. Okay. So if you, so anybody, you, you uh, this is recorded, but I don't mean to get off topic and I'm not trying to, all I'm trying to say is that this gives me the ability to see that I can compartmentalize even my own self and with obviously lots of discipline, the guidance and power of the Holy Spirit, I'm able to discipline myself as a character in my own life. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm literally beginning to see, does that make sense? Or is that, yep. does that make sense to Ray? Does that make sense to everybody? Do you get that? Okay. Why I'm so excited. I didn't sleep again last night, dude. And this is like, I did, I did, but I'm amped on being able to see myself as a character. So like you get, you invite yourself to war. That's what we're called to anyway. This is a spiritual war. All the crazy thoughts and everything's still there. But if I can discipline that, which I am learning, I've got wins. I've already figured out that there are reins on that sucker. Okay. If me in control for 30, 40 something years did what I did and it was out of control. Are we get, does that make sense? Does that make it? That is now a harnessable, like I am no longer one with my mind and my heart. That's all this confusing chaos. With untethered soul, with the power of God, with stealing your time back and making sure you're connected, that Sean is no longer the governing body for the first time in my life that's like yeah maybe you guys have all had that forever but dude that shows me like oh man i'm waking up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't know why it seems like a massive epiphany but i don't think there's a lot of people that have that and i'm gaining that I am in charge of this thing, whole thing now. It's blowing me away. Yeah. And forever, I just was like, oh, whatever the tide does. I didn't even know it. I thought I was thriving. I was just sucker fishing, taking whatever I was coming next to me. Mm -hmm. Yep. No more, man. Yeah. This is the final frontier. It's interesting as you get to that place and we have those moments. It's um we were talking about the six phases yesterday that you can continually walk in. There's a place where like what you're experiencing, best way for me to communicate it is like when you're first saved. Like Bruh! it's amazing. But then it's right after that that people just want to walk and they were you saved? Yeah, I was saved in, you know, 1972, whatever. Like, it ends up becoming some number way back there. When I want to resonate every day, I know my salvation is forever, but every day is walking in the salvation of that. Just like yesterday, in the phases he's pointing out, you go from asleep to awake, and then you can still step into activation and follow that. What happens most often is it's like, I got it. 
and you go back to sleep. You say that you got it, but you're asleep. And soon you will become normal and you'll become numb and then you go right back to where you were rather than going full all the way from awake to ascension. And that is what I've watched over and over and over. If we're not fully engaged inside of that, that cycle over and over and over, that's what happens. And I know that because that's what I continually went back to. Yesterday, I, uh, I mentioned about you can't have creation without destruction. So this is just a perfect place of just destroying who we used to be, that person that kept keeps us captive and continually venturing into the creation of the individual that will create that abundance. Yeah, which is beautiful because you're talking about like like in the Bible, dying to yourself over and over and over. And then he's talking about yesterday in those things. You are just now asleep. You are still asleep to the man that you're still becoming. You're awake to this right now. This is good. This is where we're at. But the dog but returns to its hungry. vomit. See? You, you, yep. Yeah. So I love that in the word. I don't remember when I read it, but it said, taste and see. Taste and see that the Lord is good have that experience, then you don't want to return to vomit. But a lot of people, I think, are making these mental conversions, but there's no real taste. You didn't really, where's the experience of heaven? Because that's what, that seed will start, that's what's growing in me. I want less and less of the world, not because the world isn't tantalizing, but because this is... Yeah. Yeah. It's right there. So how do, like, that is a big thing, though. Like, when you wake up, okay, that's a huge thing. But that's where all the turmoil is. People returning back, and you're like, dude, stop. And you got to stop telling them to stop. Got to let them. Or you got, or there's the one that God puts on your heart. Nope, chase him. You know? Like, this is kind of where the rubber hits the road on the awake yeah. part. It's why it's like, I don't want to have to pray, but I want the ones that are just ready. Like you have to, like, you have to be ready. You can't, it's like difficult. Could you imagine in like the zombie apocalypse, like trying to go out and make that zombie, like trying to wake them up, like wake up, come back to life. And they're like, just more pissed off. They want to eat your flesh. But then there's like that place, like ever see every once in a while, there's like a glimmer of hope in like that one zombie's eye. Like he's different than all the others. Like that's, that's what we're looking for is that one zombie. Like that's all of a sudden, like, ah, oh, there's just a glimpse. Um, so what's happening? It's waking up. Two little epiphanies. I, I get what you're saying. I'm an active participant now in my life. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm participating in the outcome of my life where for 47 years, Whatever rolled through that door is what was happening. I just figured my good luck, good looks and charm would take care of life. I didn't need to actually do anything. And then I am a better man today than I was in November, but I am not the man I want to be yet. I think that's what, what I was trying to say earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And again, like, I want to try to to look at the depths of that, like spiritually, like in reality, we get fruit. Reality, we are experiencing something. Like I believe that's what God created us for, is to have this experience, this, this experience here. But there is, again, I, this whole time, like even that part when he's like, this life, this reality is actually a delusion. My divine nature is reality. And it's continually been, bring it back. There is a spiritual depth that we are barely, just barely getting in the taste, just getting that, seeing the glimpse of that. So continually, that's the same. Seeing this guy that 
can I can obviously talk to him and be like, hey, you can make a lot of money. Yes, I can. I know I can. That's awesome. Let's talk about what the other parts. We just talked about body being balanced in business. You have exposed that your part is you have no purpose. You know that you can do these things. You have no purpose. You have no passion. All of those things are lost. You have that. You have none of those. It ends up end up being disconnection. And inside of that, that's a spiritual depth part. The more we taste and get into this part of being actually connected, the connection becomes a spiritual experience where I'm shifting from my mind what I said I was doing, what I said that I have learned and in alignment with those around me. Oh, yeah, we're, oh, you're free. I'm free. There's a spiritual lift a connection that is actually happening and that will continually change you. And what's so interesting is we could easily all of a sudden be, this is what happens over and over. It was this program. <laughs> it was all of this. And it was like, no, it wasn't. It was just the connection. It's like brain bleaching. the thing. It's like it's over it. and over. Your whole brain has to change. Like I found if I start talking bad about a situation, I'm like, what am I doing? How can I do that? I was just stating that I'm a child of the king. He's got dreams over me. I just read that in Psalms this morning. He's dreaming things for me. He has visions of awesome life for me. What is my, what is this pathetic excuse for I'm scared of what's going to happen in my divorce story that I'm telling myself again? And that's what I mean by that durability. It's like my mental has changed. So now it's like harder for myself to even trick myself. And I'm trusting that more. So then, you know, I don't know what that. But does, does that make does that make sense to anybody? Yes, you have to. Keep like my going. brain is yeah. It's like it's like I'm I'm con reconvincing myself that I'm not crazy, but I've just decided I'm going to jump off the cliff of this Jesus cliff and chase him down in the Bible every day, and it's changed my life in two weeks. Whatever I said, eleven days of straight Bible. It blows. He's blowing my mind. Yeah, he showed up. But again, and I was doubting him the whole time, and here again, he is. What happens, if I can continually try to point that out, what's happening is, again, you can either worship the Bible or you can just come back to the Bible again and experience him. Yeah. Am I stuck on reality or am I sp stuck on reality? Yeah. Am I stuck on this or am I stuck like, oh, my word, I am experiencing him. I'm experiencing him and he's changing he's giving me what this is but it's experiential for me to put it into work in my life now today not 2000 years ago that's the part where i'm talking about the reality and the spirituality it's really at a depth of what is happening it, it is changing if you have to change it like if we have to change our minds anyways like we're supposed to obviously according to the curriculum we're supposed to think new and think better right then i don't know if anybody else does but does it seem like you're talking different everything is different yep. because what a year and a half ago you remember hanging out with me i was always down on something man something was gonna happen a lot trying to make light of it right mm -hmm. or like running off to whatever my crutches my vices a lot. And I didn't think I really had an option to change. And I thought life was what it was, not what you make it. I didn't believe when people talk that hocus pocus crap about your mentality is your reality, I laughed. Uh, and then my mind now thinks nothing but those kinds of saying, sayings. It's always something bringing me back into truth. Always. This is echoing in my heart for eternity now. And I know it comes from that practice of keeping our body healthy. The whole thing. Body, being, business, balance. What you got, Craig? Uh, I just, well, I mean, a, a bunch of different things, but, you know, I was thinking about what, what Sean says, you know, and, 
And so, you know, you're right, right? He has his path. So this is, you know, God can see this path, right? Your perfect path. Okay. And so then your choices or, you know, when you give in to whatever, your temptations or whatever, you know, alter that path, right? So it's kind of like alternate versions of reality. There's your best self, which is here, which is probably your impossible goal, you know. Then your past, take it back off that. You can come back to that path, but the end will not be the same. But in the end, the real the real goal is what? To get to heaven, right? So no matter what deviates from that, if you come back and surrender and give in, you can still reach win the ultimate game. You know, I guess is the way I think about it. Oh. You know, yeah. The other side of that is, is you know, I was just thinking. I was like, you know, there's still so much work for me in my mind, right? But yeah, your mind does does change the way you think. You change the way you speak. You know, and then, you know, I mean, I've walked. I mean, at this point. <clears throat> You know, I don't, I don't, I've changed, I've walked away from like, you know, I don't know, 90% of the people that were my friends. Yeah. yeah. I don't have fun the way I used to have fun. Yeah. We party, we just party different. That, right, right. I party at 4 a.m. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I hear y'all stacks going off. Dang, you know? right. Dang, bing, bing. Does everybody have to be so consistent? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but, you know, I'm looking forward to building those friendships outside of here for, like, enjoyment, right? Whether that be kite surfing or, you know, whatever, you know. That's just, that's just where found I a like. field where we can go. So it's right here. Yeah. Any of them. Yes. Did you find it, James? What you got? Yeah. I'll find it in a... What you got, yeah. Nathaniel? Going off of kind of what Sean was saying, do not be conformed to the image of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that that's where your mind is being renewed. And that, that's coming from, directly from, the Word of God. I had a pastor tell me one time, you get into the word so that the word can get into you. Yeah. Um, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That's literally Christ on those pages. And you can't know who you are. You can't know truth unless you know who Christ is. Yeah. And you, you gain that from getting into the word and transforming your mind. Yeah. And that's that part where it's like experiential. It's it's a it's a thing when you like believe something. Like belief is not just a thought, or that I have something memorized. Like that belief, knowing that I have the mental with it, I have the emotion, the experiential motion that taps into that place, and I can still go like, yes, yeah, Second Peter one five verse five through seven, like has absolutely radically changed my life experientially inside of those things, right? Not just like, oh yeah, I found something. Uh, you're wrong. You know, it's uh holding other people accountable yeah. rather than experientially. Who's who's reading that Bible with you? Who knows that Bible better than any of us, not including having any angels? The devil. The devil. First thing he says is, All right, man, make sure you take good notes here because you know who needs to hear that verse. Yeah. And he makes it about somebody else as soon as you start reading. That's the biggest trick. Over and over. Always but, somebody else. But we came from a place. We, I came to the Bible after hanging out with Ray for a year and a half, doing lots of therapy on um, how to approach things in a healthy way. And the Bible ripped that completely open. And I was ready for the Bible. I wasn't ready for the Bible like this. But I was. <laughs> it's like being called to the ultimate quest. As a little boy, like what was that kid? Uh, what was his name that pulled the sword from the stone? Uh, oh. King Arthur, thank you. 
almost said Sir Lance a lot. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was in the same something play. stupid like that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but dude, he got that call as a kid. As a kid. Pull the sword as a kid. You're gonna pull the sword as a kid. You don't. You don't come here mature spiritually. <laughs> Not if you're gonna come correctly to the Bible. There's so there's no way you can have a lesson for anybody for a long time. Pretty well. It's good. I want to open up some like questions just to see again the reality and the spirituality that have been kind of revealed over as well because we obviously can see that there's been fruit it's awesome of course we want more <laughs> i want perfection in all of those areas i want to ask you the question and i want to see you you can write the question down and then you can put your answer and then i want i'm going to on these places i'm going to also in my in my quiet time with the lord where he also pointed me in those things, and then I'll have you answer those as well. So we've asked this question before. So what do you want? Hopefully that's something after three months, you know, most men cannot answer that question. Hopefully after three months, we know at least a little bit, right? What do you want? Is there something that sticks out that you want to share? Soul, peace, and purpose. It's good. Soul, peace, and purpose. What else? Prosperity, to raise awareness, and fulfillment. Legacy, clear roadmap from wrecked to redeemed and recommissioned. What else? Who's next? What you got? So I'll break it down. You know, body, same thing. I still want to be, you know, what I consider fit. On the being side, you know, at this point, I want to apply more to be an example of the light, you know, for others to see than to come in. You know, balance, you know, at, at this point, balance wise, I just need to be the example. Mm. <laughs> you know, like the, you know, for them to see, to follow, to go. You know, it can't, you can talk to your blue in the face, but if you're not living it, they can't see it, they can't apply it. Yeah. Yeah. And then business wise, uh, you know, like the same as Sean, you know, uh, ties into, you know, freedom and, and legacy. I found the verse. It was, it was John 17, three. I was looking at Matthew. That's why I couldn't find it. Oh, but, uh, and this is real and eternal life that they know you, the one true God and Jesus Christ, whom you sent. And to, I, I mean, I think, like, to truly know him, to, you know, I know people, I know sometimes, Raylan, you're like, oh, God told me this. And you know that God told you that without a shadow of a doubt. And and I know a few other people like that, that, like, they, oh, God told me this. And if he tells you something, you just follow what he says. You know, you can't, there's no arguing with that, with logic or this or that or whatever. So that's, I mean, and that kind of takes care of body being balanced in business. If, if you literally whatever you set your heart on if you know that god truly did that and that's you know that's what eternal life is we talk about oh the whole end goal is to go to heaven 
I truly in my heart of hearts believe that the goal is to know him and to have heaven on earth today yeah. and tomorrow and the next day and have that, that's that connection, that piece that, that Sean's talking about is to really have that connection with him. And, yeah. um, you know, I love it. That just so happened to be the Bible verse on the day on the Bible app. It is. <laughs> <laughs> John. Oh, 17, three. But close, close. close. <laughs> Numbers is not my strong suit. <laughs> perfect. It perfect. still applies to all the dyslexics. <laughs> it's beautiful. Good, good. This is the question that God asked back to me when I was asking, you know, what do I what what do I want? What do I want? And and that's that place inside the knowing. He said, What's inside? So I'd ask you to consider that. What's inside? <laughs> consider it for a second. Now, is that what's inside of me or what's inside of those desires? So for me, when I was asking the thing, like, what do, what do you want, Raylan? What do you want? Like, that was my intention set. And having this experience where he turns the question around and asks what's inside. And he showed me two places. I remember where I was before. Paranoia, suicide, sex, porn, alcohol, drugs. That's what was inside of me. And in that same, like almost that exact same moment, he showed me what's inside now. Vision, pathfinder, going in that one direction i have been called i am the one like that has been chosen for this this is my time to go now not later what's inside he showed me both two difference like me following me me following him and so i just continually ask those questions what do i want and what's inside I was going to say it earlier with what do you want, but it just goes to what's inside. I want the old man to die. I want to feel what it's like to walk as a new creation where they're, the old man is just gone. But what's beautiful, what's beautiful is I hear you, but there's this realization that what is amazing about that, the reason that that change is so significant is we know the light because we know the dark. I continually choose this relationship with him because I have the memories of my past. I continually love the spiritual more and more and see a spiritual depth in myself and others that I didn't see before. Well, I did see it in a way, but I was paranoid of it because he was allowing me to see stuff. And I'm like, but God doesn't exist. Like, so this is, <clears throat> so there's a place where he is dying or he's asleep and you're waking up. There is the dying to yourself. If you completely kill off the ego, there's nothing to, to wage war against anymore. There is none of that. So you have to be thankful because once we truly grasp what he says is this culture is wanting um, satisfaction. They want what's easy, but it doesn't get us there. What gets you there is knowing that you want that guy to die. You have to choose him for that guy to die. There has to be the choosing. If there wasn't that, you would just be, I mean, what it would, like, there's nothing to defeat anymore. We want the same. We want the hero's journey. We want to live that out. And when we understand that and we walk in that, that is the, that is the most beautiful part of life. It's inevitable. Paul called it the thorn in his side. You're gonna have you're gonna have that constant hurdle. I gotta get over this desire to eat Debbie cakes or look at porn or whatever. You have to get over it. You have to continually get over it. And like you have Jacob. To, shh, yeah, stack that win over and over and over. Then you can then we defeat everybody. Defeat 
the devil, you got the power of the blood, the word of your testimony now is backing up with the, what God did, Jesus did on the cross. So you're living it up. That's new man, bro. You're already doing it. That's why you're having that in your head right now. The devil's telling you that you're not there yet. What? How many, how long has it been since you had a drug, drop of alcohol? Yeah. <laughs> You've literally broken the physical need for it. Yeah, now it's just choice. Yeah. It's like, uh, who was it, Jacob wrestling with God, right? Like, I continually want to be wrestling with God. Even in the Bible stack part, I want the struggle. There has to be the struggle because then there's me putting it in, into action to be able to do that. Have to over and over and over. Going through crack addiction is a, is a suffering and a darkness that I don't know that there's anything else like it. Um. I, I hear people say, oh, I was saved when I was eight. You'd never suffered. How could you possibly know God until you have suffered before him? Um, not to discount their salvation story. They, you know, it's real to them, but I, I had to go through the battle. That was the only way I, God had to put me on my knees in order for me to look up to him. I found, I found this quote the other day. I count him braver who overcomes his desires than him who conquers his enemies. For the hardest victory is the victory over self. Yes. Yep. Bro, that is the core of fighting this reality and the spirituality, this delusion that we live in. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's both. That's what's amazing about life is you get to, you've experienced it that certain way, right? And it's so amazing, like, because he says, if we just have like a child's like faith, like the most beautiful testimony for myself on the other side is knowing that my daughters, like Emma right now being 17 and a half and the conversations we have make me feel like I'm disgusted. Like she's so pure that she doesn't know these things. And she's so in love with the Lord confirms to me that the right way, the truth in that relationship is the right way. Like, it is good. And for her, there will be some type of suffering, but it won't be the same as, like, mine. It won't. God, I hope not. But it's beautiful to at least watch and see right now that relationship of what it is. Yeah, but her suffering won't be any less just because she's not the one walking through it. You know, watching Joe, watching you suffer was probably some of the darkest days she's ever had. Yeah. And you were the one walking through it. And I was. I think that's kind of like part of the maternal or like how the design is, you know, like women are more there to like shelter during suffering. Men are more designed to suffer, I think. <laughs> Although they do have to bear children. So. <laughs> suffer. Yeah, we all suffer in life some, but some way. But especially the pure ones, like the pure, even though they're pure, she's going to have to endure other people's suffering. There's going to be something that she will as well. We don't all, we don't, none of us get out of this unschooled. <laughs> in our own way and we're not getting out alive either so yeah we're not getting out of here alive what you got james and he brought it up but the uh, galatians 2 20 it's actually written on the wall over there i'm crucified with christ it's not i that live but christ that lives in me and so on some of this on some of there's certain we all have certain things where god just takes it away from us and then there's some that we got to walk through the whole process some of it and so sometimes we got to choose to die to things daily and um, that's kind of the process of life that it might take a while and we might have to say no to it a lot. Yeah. And then other things he just takes away and you're like, oh, that was easy, you know? Um, but that was kind of on the, on the ascension part yesterday, you know, dying to what you've been and becoming who you were meant to be. Mm. That's what, the, and I wrote down yesterday, Galatians 2.20, because that's, you know, we've all been leading our lives a certain way up to this point and we have to die to that and then just let him take over. And and like I said, sometimes that process is daily. Sometimes it's minute by minute. Sometimes you, you know, I, I think I told you guys the other week after the one of the men's meetings, I was telling the guy in the parking lot, I was like, man, my favorite liquor store is right there. You know, they got the little 10 packs of, you know. And so I I did tell you guys. Yeah, so and then, then you I get out turn of right. I drive and I get on the road and I was like, man, that was a win. And then I see Culver's has Turtle Sundays. <laughs> like I was like, keep and I literally said out loud, keep driving, James. It, it was like a, <laughs> on. Like a, I literally I saw that and I was like, don't even look, don't even look at it. Just go. You'll be home in five minutes. And, 
you know, so there, so there are certain things that, that we have to die to a lot. I mean, and eventually like if, if, if any of us didn't eat sugar for a month, we would probably go, that tastes like crap, you what, know, or, or the amount of, you know, the amount of sugar that's in a Krispy Kreme, there's people that can't eat them because they're too sweet. And like, if you eat them every day, you're like, you love it. You can eat six of them. No big deal. Yeah. I want to ask before we, so here's, here's, here's another question. What's next? Not answering that question, but I just remembered when the last time I drank was. It was the day before you asked us vets to give us your best for 21 days. And I said, I told you, you got the best of me for 21 days. Bro, I remember days. you looking me right in the eyes right out there. You got me. You for 21 days. Me. Yep. We're over 21 days now. But... Yep. And remember what our conversation, what I was talking about? what I want you to do is not just worry about like giving me 21 days. I want you to build a relationship with this experience that you're going to have in that 21 days. Right. right. Yeah. Cause that's where it's at is the depth of that relationship that you're building over time. Was that relationship in the past three weeks, four weeks better than the relationship that you're going to be called back to? some point you're going to be tested and tempted with the relationship that you have that you had and is this relationship this new life this transforming this dying to yourself this coming awake is this activation application is this more than going back is christ in the center of that is christ is truth is relationship with christ is that more important than what just happened so what's next knowing that having that conversation that's perfectly done what's next that's your next question yep. yep what's next and you don't have to say because i want you to still consider it and you're gonna when I was asking that question and going into the depths of it the question that God asked me is what are you experiencing there's a reality part of that question what's next okay cool but at the spiritual depth part what are you experiencing What you are experiencing, he was showing me, what you are experiencing is what you're creating. You want to experience something different, create something different. So it, again, it becomes both of these questions, both of them, it's good to ask what's next or what do you want? It's awesome. What do I want in this life? What was I created? What, what, what do I want? But what more important than the depth of that question is what's inside? What's he exposing? One side or the other. What's next? It's amazing to ask the question, what's next? I want him to give me vision and give me those things. What's next? But to consider, what am I experiencing? Because what I'm focusing on, what emotions I'm tapping into, the mind, thought, the thoughts that I'm having is creating the reality that I'm living. This shifting that we've done, this shifting of the mind and the lifting of the heart that we've done over the past three months will continue to expose, if you walk in that, the shifting of the mind, the shifting of the thoughts, the transformation of what that is, and the lifting of the heart into connection with him at a depth. So yes, what's next, but what are you experiencing? 
can go ahead and say it. I feel like I am in that whole thing. I feel like I am a leader in it. I don't even know how that is. I don't have a clue. I just feel like it is. And I should be way more stepping into my natural given what God is telling me to do, be more obedient, be more submissive. And as I'm growing in this, I see that becoming my thing. Yes. And then I see the hot, that's the white hot tip of the spear kind of thing. So it's kind of like a dream come true for me. Again, it's like um, unfinished business kind of deployed feeling. And I know that's what other men want. Everybody wants this quest. So I know that it's also a business thing for me. So it tantalizes that part of me that's always been eager to be valuable, but also gain value and not be weird about it. Yep. So that part is fixed. It's literally my answer. So it is yes. my call as well. Yeah, it's our call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm owning it. Yes, have to. Have to own it, man. Have to. Yep. Have to. So that's what's next. It is what's next. You're literally already now speaking and creating vision of what is next for this group. What's next? Dude. Yeah. It's powerful. <laughs> like super powerful. We used to have a saying when we were deployed and, um, I had the privilege of working with some of the world's finest special forces for a tier period of time that I'll always look back on fondly. And this is that. We used to say, fingers in the magic. Did you guys ever see? <laughs> I used to yeah. hear that old buzzword, man. Like you'd see us on Fox the next morning. Oh man, what's up? Fingers in the magic. I feel like my whole being is the magic. Like it's my mind is controlling everything now. It's like, mm -hmm. it's in proper order. And now this is a part of the fabric of reality that I get to submit to God and let him have that authority. And now I can be a, par a proactive part in it. It's literally yeah. being in the magic. Anything less than that vision is selling ourselves short for sure. No, not, 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 not that it's hard to compete with Fox News and that stuff is trash nowadays, but dude, this is it. I'm not a savior. I'll never be anyone's savior, but I'll damn well be the hero of my story. And what's next is a continual pursuit, conquering that epic quest to be that hero. Yeah. I'm not stopping until I get to that point of prosperity where I am able to help those that I'm called to help. I'm capable of it. Hmm. Not coming up to that is just selling myself short. Yeah. And God's not wrong. No way. I see it as well, Andy, for sure. 100%. You won't stop. Yeah. Dude, let's freaking get it, man. <laughs> Just barely. Like he talks about trying to put words with what happens. What's the hype? Happens. What's hype, man, in your Colby? Was hype man part of your Colby? You're the you're the group hype man. It's in there. You should be a coffee salesman. <laughs> you know, yeah. part, of it, part of it is that we didn't work out. You know, so I'm a little bit extra amped on the mic, which is good. I like that we have to focus all the energy on intellect and communication, but I am extra hype for sure. It's beautiful though. It's absolutely amazing. I will take I will take this, Sean. Well, and the thing is, dude, for real, it's not like I'm I'm not churching it. I really am trying to walk in authenticity. So no, does anybody yeah. remember him a year ago? I can pull videos out. Yeah, let's just keep it good today. <laughs> I remember who you were. You've always been intelligent. You always can communicate. 
what he is communicating from his heart right now is totally different than what he was before trying to communicate from his mind. I can feel the difference in the energy of him speaking it. You tried to sound smart before. Like you were, I know you know the stuff, but I can feel the energetic difference of who it is. And that is what I believe you're talking about. There's one thing to be trying to be selling me with a mind, but to know that I know this is what is transforming his life through a part. Even six months ago, the, the Sean is different. What yeah. did I tell you the other day? What did I tell you the other day? The war part. Mm, we talk a lot. Uh, said I would. The old oh, yeah, Sean. Yeah, 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 the yeah. old you Sean. You fight for me now. You fight. You. I would go to war for the old Sean. Yeah. I will go to war with this Sean. Dude, I'm burning my fucking bridge. Everything is burnt behind me, man. It's gone. I see my life now. I can see how this is. I can see this is my only option. Or before I played with the devil. I was like, oh, yeah, I follow Jesus uh, sometimes. And I'd go back 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 and I'd go back. Never having purpose, playing with myself in my mind. Making sure that I'm okay here in my mind. Yep. Where this is absolutely in full destitution. Black is the darkest black hole ever. And now I have purpose and I have truth, dude. And this is Jesus. And I'm just, I'm just now figuring out that I'm not ashamed to say Jesus. Like his name and invite him into my house out loud and say it on the internet. And I don't, well, here's one thing. I'm sorry. One more yep, thing. Yep. I don't even like public speaking. This doesn't feel like public speaking because you guys are my friends. I know that what goes on the internet, but I don't see yep. that. I don't feel it. I hate public speaking. <laughs> and I've always done okay at it because it was a mental game for me. And I played all the tactics on how to talk to people and navigate through whatever PowerPoint I had to present. Now I could care less about a PowerPoint. I want to affect change. I want to communicate for kingdom that I never thought was even remotely going to even become a desire, nor especially a, a reality of mine. And now I'm able to communicate kingdom and it's able to encourage people. You guys are, I'm encouraged by you guys in the kingdom. Like you're actually building the kingdom in me. You want to know what's inside of me, dude? The kingdom. For real. Yeah. This is the eternal sanctuary. Yeah. This is the inner sanctum of the holy God that I've neglected. The king lives in here. I'm a co-host. Dude, this, my, this is my new reality. And I know I sound insane, but I, what was that? What was that? Best part. What was that part? Dude, we, we, I'm okay because I've got a license for this. We read a, we read a verse, dude. We came across it when I was really feeling like I was going insane. Do you remember that? It was like, if you're out of your mind, it is for the sake of Christ. Yeah. If I'm in my right mind, it is for your sake. I don't know what that actually means from the scholars, but what I get from that is I don't have to filter my reality in order to appease your reality. I can be full and I can speak and I can be in a way that's honest and full of integrity and exciting and igniting to others and it's not man-made. And if I keep that, then I know, and I know he wants to keep me in that, then I know there's nothing but kingdom to be built. We have been recommissioned, man. For real, this is the real recommissioning of your soul. Yeah, We really are ministers of reconciliation. And we are the lifeboat that most won't get to even see, much less get a hand to pull up in. I feel like that's actually what's happening and I'm willing to communicate now because I see my role in that and I'm willing to communicate from try and be embarrassed, talk about porn, talk about girls, talk about whatever, talk about drugs, 
and make sure that our hearts are, sh are absolutely being transparent so that we can be better. So we can navigate this life well. It's beautiful. We love hearing your heart and your mind. It's awesome. We're at the end of it, man. Three months passed. I wanted at the depth of being able to both walk through reality and the spirituality of it. We still have this weekend to step into. <laughs> you step into this weekend with intention and intensity. Again, both in reality and spirituality, you will not be the same. It is both a digging in with the mind and digging in with the heart to expose like what's there and for you to step into. So come with your hearts ready and prepared to step into that this weekend. The which one? No, no, no. Step into their full on ready, whatever you're called to do, but step into that ready with your mind. We've been preparing your heart and mind for three months to step into this. Just now exposing again that the reality is the reality of what it is. You've had fruit in some ways. We always want more. I want perfection. But there's a reality part. Whether you continue on in the other parts or whatever, my time with you has been absolutely amazing. I will always, you can always call me. It has nothing to do with that. This has been an honor. And I think like at the depths of whatever this is, I know that it is real in reality and in the spirituality part. And I don't want you to forget that. You moving forward with us or without us, there's no reason that the three months should not still radically change your life. It's just what's created here, what happens here what we live here, what we are continually going over is what this is. Like that is the difference. God, we always, every morning we leave here and you can go out and live that. But it's very easy to get lost. Okay? So I love you. Men, I respect you. You get up in the morning, you come and do this, that is no easy task just in that. And you have continually opened the Bible and made that important. Thank you, brother. I love you, man. That is the, the core. We used to never open the Bible here. We were still walking in it. We were still living and being in action. But even then, it was missing. And then now, the same as Garrett steps into that whole piece, and I can see it, and it's beautiful, and it's supposed to be the centerpiece. It's been the most amazing part to run with a crew that we're actually doing it. Living it. Nobody can take that from you. Nobody. You've had an experience. You're a divine, sovereign being. Nobody the rest of your life can take this experience from you. You can always be able to connect and come back to this time. Always. And it will wake your soul up and you'll go, I know that he's real. I know that it's real. I know it's possible. Uh, is this your pitch for an early bird special? Uh, because I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me there's an early bird special. <laughs> We're going to have a car wash at the auto zone <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Just right. to you. Now that we got beach bods, we're going to show up. Yeah. Some... That's right. Right. We expect, uh, yeah. you know, jean shorts. Sure. Yeah. I can studs, promise you. studs and such. Studs and such. <laughs> <laughs> there is a ring to it. <laughs> Do I get to wear my chaps? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know me way too well <laughs> did you see the video from yesterday <laughs> yeah all right fellas i gotta roll yes pray us out please 
Yes, please. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> Dearly Father, we uh, thank you, Lord, for this day, and thank you for all the many blessings and allowing us to come here, Lord, and, and talk about you and talk about how we can mold our lives and live more for you, Lord, and, and be the best example out there for others and <clears throat> guide our families and guide each other. And and uh, we are just so you know thankful for for uh, for us and the opportunity, and and uh, we ask that you watch over us going forward, Lord, and in Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Black, black shirt, black shorts.